Welcome back, everybody. Uh, this is the Toronto Travel Guide for the Shadowrun Six World Campaign 39ths. In this video, we're going to take a look at some of the different locations that are mentioned during the specific scenarios outlined in the campaign. Um, we're going to go through each of the nights in order. Uh, there are some locations that are new that we haven't touched on in the travel guide before. And there are some locations that we're going to review and I'm going to give some suggestions on how these locations can be used in the campaign. So, uh, this is your warning. There will be spoilers for the campaign. Uh, we're going to talk a tiny bit about what each night is about. So, if you're a player, might want to turn back now. And if you're a game master, I hope you find this information useful. So, let's get started. All right, so we start with week one, night one. And night one is about finding shelter and responding to emergencies. Uh, this can be done either you know, on the way to a location that the runners are going to stay or after they've already found a location. Now, our first location is Black Creek Pioneer Village. This is located in Jane and Finch on the eastern edge of Jane and Finch up near up against the boundaries of York University. Now if you remember from our previous videos Jane and Finch is effectively the barons of Toronto. So we've got downtown Toronto over here. Uh, we have the CN Tower here at the bottom of the screen and uh, Jane and Finch up here in the northwest corner. So uh, Black Creek Village or Black Creek Pioneer Village it's a living history museum of 19th century buildings and so as I was looking at this I'm Kind of curious, okay, how is this location different in 2080? Is it still in a museum? Or is it has it been adapted to the poor and the sinless taking over the area? You know, are they trying to you know take advantage or are they going back to a uh, a more primitive way of life? Are they relying less on their technology? Um you know, has the museum been abandoned because of the location that it's in? Um, you know, in addition, uh, being next to York University and the fact that the university is still active, um, you know, how does, um, you know, how does that affect whether or not players uh, choose to use the Pioneer Village as their as their base of operations. Um, obviously another option is York University. Uh, once the power goes out, you know, there are obviously a large amount of buildings, dorms, uh, you know, uh, different areas that the players can take advantage of. So either basing out of York University or out of the Pioneer Village you know, can play off of each other. Um, in addition, one thing I thought about is, you know, there is effectively a truce between the gangs in Jane and Finch and York University. So does the blackout, you know, uh, cause problems with the truce or do the gangs decide to start taking advantage of that uh, and get more aggressive? So some, some things to think about. But that's one location that the, the players could end up in. Uh, another option is downtown. And for that, the book mentions the Royal York Hotel, currently known as the Fairmont Royal York. Uh, the hotel dates back to 1929. Uh, it's about a 13-minute walk to the CN Tower. Um, and it's about a kilometer away from 
uh, from the harbor and from the ferry landings uh, to the Toronto Islands. So this can be a good location to base out of uh, for anything you might want to do in, in the downtown areas in your campaign. Uh, the building is 28 stories tall, has 1,300 rooms, restaurants, event spaces, uh, a ballroom, concert hall. So let's take a look at some of the pictures of this. So things that I was thinking about is, you know, even though it's downtown, you know, how safe is the hotel? Obviously, you're going to have, you know, uh, more more corporations in downtown. Um, but, you know, are they maintaining the safety of the hotel? Um, is it being raided and controlled by gangs? Is hotel security still active? You know, those are some other questions that you need to ask. Um, I definitely like the look of this building. Um, kind of has a Ghostbusters feel to it, if you ask me. But it could also be a great place for the, the runners to hole up. If a little bit fancy. Um, another nice thing about this location, um, if you don't necessarily want the players in the hotel, the Docklands are nearby, over here to the east. Um, and, you know, if the players aren't in the Docklands and the hotel is still secure, there are most likely gangs and other, you know, adversaries that are obviously a short distance away. The next option that the book suggests for night one is Cabbage Town, a bit northeast of downtown and near the Toronto Necropolis. Uh, they recommend it because there's a large variety of locations and, uh, you know, be it upper class neighborhoods, middle class neighborhoods, the Necropolis itself, uh, as I was looking at other pictures, uh, I found the Riverdale Farm is nearby um, and could be an, uh, an option uh, similar to the, uh, the, the Black Creek Pioneer Village uh, as far as a, a place for the, the players to, to hole up. Um, I don't recall actually going through the pictures of Cabbage Town in our first video, so let's take a look at this really quick. Lots of flowers, apparently. Interesting mix, very old buildings in the area. But definitely some good middle class areas could potentially be safe let's see and so those are the locations that are recommended in the campaign um, on night two, uh, night two is m sort of a continuation of night one. Uh, it's about securing the locations that the ru runners have chosen. And so things to think about are what is the new normal for your runners? What is developed in their chosen location? Um, are gangs raiding? Are, you know, uh, is the, have the, have the runners chosen poorly? Are they going to need to relocate? Um, you know, there's a lot of 
different options for night two, but for the most part, you're going to reuse locations from night one. So moving on to night three, uh, night three, you start having to deal with resources, uh, primarily food. And the runners are sent to Atticus High School, which in this case is a fictional location. So the school is run by the Renraku Socratic Education Group, serving corporate citizens and those that couldn't afford the tuition. So it's typically a, uh, a higher class school. So I just did a search for high schools in the Toronto area. And I just looked at some of the different images, things that I was trying to think of, okay, who, you know, which represents sort of an, an upper class school. And for that, I decided on the Central Toronto Academy. Um, I could be wrong, but it, I, I like the look of it. It's, it's a, a nicely designed building seems a bit fancier, definitely with some refurbishment, um, could be adapted and taken over by the corporations. Obviously somebody who was out there with their dog. Unfortunately, no images inside the school. But I think it would make a great location for, uh, for the Atticus High School. You've got three floors and a basement. Um, you know, solid brick building. Could be very interesting. All right, so for night four, uh, at this point, the blackout continuing um, is starting to set people on edge. And so fear is starting to grow. The manosphere is making people nervous, um, especially those that are, are magically inclined, um, paranormal scholars, etc. Uh, the session is going to be set in more dark locations. Um, you know, obviously we already spoke about the Toronto Necropolis and uh, and you know, the fact that it's a, a giant cemetery. Uh, so that can be one location. Uh, again, looking back at uh, Jane and Finch, um, you know, being the barons, obviously being run down, plenty of dark locations. Uh, another one is the old Don Jail. Uh, and in, in addition, the Don River. The Don River, don't forget, at this point is toxic uh, and heavily polluted. The old Don Jail uh, was the site of many executions, and so magic in the area is definitely a problem. Um... In addition, um, you, know, you have places like the Docklands. Um, you know, if they're being inhabited by gangs, you know, what what is life there? What has happened to the manosphere? Um, they also mention the High Park Zoo. You know, don't forget High Park is a very large uh, park within the middle of the city. Um, the the zoo and in additional in in addition the park uh, has you know many different paracritters that are are now living in the park. So, uh, and then one location they mention is Browser's Den of Talismongery. Uh, located in the Yorkdale Megablock Shopping Center, which again is another fictional location, so I don't have anything specific, but I believe it's going to be a, a larger than, than we are used to mall. Uh, 
night five is on on the road, so it's going to move around uh, different portions of the city. Uh, most notably, uh, High Park and Cabbage Town. Uh, it's going to deal with, um, you know, more specifically wealthier parts of the town um, because people are now trying to get power restored and get power available. And they figure it's going to go first to the people who can afford it. So something to think about. All right. On night six, a dragon has been seen flying over the city. But why? Uh, it does seem to be targeting specific locations. And the ones that they mention are the Dominion Public Building, which is here. It's an old government building. I didn't find a specific build date, but it's definitely a very large, fancy government building. Definitely an older style. They also mentioned the dragon being seen uh, in Kazaloma, which, if you recall, is a castle. Um, high-end, expensive, uh, normally one of the social hubs of the city, so the dragon is definitely being seen around this area. Let's look at one picture of it really quick. The, the dragon is also seen around downtown. Um... You know, partly because it is the site of, you know, many different wealthy people in the area. And then they mention that the dragon is seen near Cider Krupp, Ontario. Now, for that, they unfortunately do not have a specific area. Um, they do mention that it is bleak and gray but it doesn't say where it's located. And so I was looking around the downtown area at some of the different high-rise uh, high buildings, and I found the Richmond Adelaide Center, which isn't necessarily correct, but this particular image, uh, the book describes the dragon as being seen coming in and out uh, of the building, and... Uh, primarily on the rooftop. So the fact that this building is shorter in size and is still around all of these high rises, which would typically be associated with a, with a giant corporation. I kind of like the idea of this one. So this is what, this is the description that I'll be using for cider Krupp, Ontario. Uh, not very fancy, but definitely, you know, definitely implying power now night seven does go back to the dominion public building the runners are tasked with clearing people out of it so it's clearly being taken over by uh, by refugees people trying to figure out what to do in the dark um, the site does sit above two ley lines so definitely going to be magic involved and there is a vault below the building that is from the early 20th century, but is untouched, at least according to the 30 Nights campaign. So, but that'll take us through the first week of 30 Nights. I hope I gave you guys some good ideas, some good things to look at. Uh, as always, uh, 
leave any comments or questions down below and I'll be happy to answer them. Uh, please give a like and subscribe if you found this useful and we'll talk to you next time. Thanks.